Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, that we can come and we can come and be in in the midst of your presence tonight, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that we can just come and sit at your feet. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that tonight is a night, Father God, where we can come and we can receive your word, Father God. We can receive your healing word. We can receive your freeing word, Father God, and we can praise you, Father God, with all of our heart, Father God. We thank Father God, tonight for all that you have done, Father God, and we worship you with all of our hearts, Father God, because because you are worthy. You are worthy of it all, Father God. Father God, we declare tonight, Father God, that you are holy, that you are worthy, that you are mighty, and that you are the king of our life, and you are the king of our heart, Father God, and we praise you, and we worship you, and we thank you from now unto the end of our life, Father God. We praise you, Father God, for all, for all, for all, for all. No matter what it looks like, we praise you, Father God. Father God, just thank you, Lord, for this time, Father God, where we can humble ourselves, Father God, and we can bask in your glory, Father God, and we just thank you for your glory tonight, Father God, for your glory coming down in this place, Jesus, and being with us. Father God, I just give you the praise and the honor that is due your name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for the shifting God. Father, we thank you for the changing of the guards, God. We decree and declare, God. We position ourselves, God. Hallelujah, as leaders, God, upon the earth, God. We thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. For land, oh God. The earth, oh God. Hallelujah. To prevail, God, with your people. Father, what we thank you, O oh God, we decree and declare, God, that we line up, God, to your will, O oh God. We decree and declare, God, our mind be your mind, our heart be your heart, God, our ways be your ways, God. We thank you, O oh God, hallelujah, for removing everything that is not of you, O oh God. We decree and declare, God, that our heart, God, be a heart of flesh, God. Hallelujah, that when your word comes forth, God, it shall produce the fruit that you call it to be, O oh God. We decree and declare, God, every blind eyes be open, God. Father, every heart receive, oh God. Hallelujah, in this season, God. We decree and declare, God, that this land is blessed, God. Hallelujah, every devil, God, is bound, God. We come against, God, every spirit of suicide, God. We come against every spirit, oh God. Hallelujah, of oh, oh, mental illness, oh God. Father, in the land, God. We thank you, oh God, for this land shall be blessed, oh God. Father, we thank you, oh God, for the harvest, God, of your people shall go, oh God. Father, in the highways and byways and compel the people to come. Father, we thank you for providing, God, your labors, oh God, that we shall move forth, oh God, with power and with demonstration. We thank you, oh God, when we lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. We thank you for every blind eye shall see, God. Every deaf ear shall hear. Father, oh God, in the name of Jesus, we declare, declare, God, 
They're in this house today, God. Miracles, signs, and wonders, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Father, most of all, God, we thank you for the shift, God. We thank you for renewing us, oh God, for strengthening us, oh God. Father, we decree and declare, God, that today is a day that we shall not look back no more. We shall keep our hand on the plow, not look back, God. We decree and declare, God, that we shall move forward. Hallelujah, we shall press, oh God, in this season, oh God. We thank you, Father, for there is no weakness of God in the body of Christ, oh God. We thank you for separating the wheat and the tear, God, that we may be strengthened, oh God, by your spirit. We thank you for moving, God, in this house, oh Lord. Hallelujah, God. For giving us, oh God, what we need, stability, oh God. Oh God, great character and strength, God, in the house, oh Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for tearing out every barrier, oh God. Father, everything, oh God, that tries to move your people out the way. Father, we thank you, oh God, we shall, God, overcome by the word of our mouth and by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah, God, we thank you, oh God. Father, we decree and declare, God, that those who come in, God, one way, oh God, they shall go out another. They shall be healed. They shall be delivered. They shall be set free. We come against every mountain, God. We speak to it now. Be there, move in, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, oh God. We decree and declare your word. It shall not fall on deaf ear today, but it shall, God, produce, oh God, the seed of harvest, God. Father, that you want us to have in this season. Father, we thank you for moving, oh God, in this house. We thank you for a new sound. We decree and declare a new sound over praise and worship. We come against, oh God, everything that's coming against, oh God, praise and worship, oh God. Let the worship of God shall be an instant to your nostrils, God. We shall give you the glory that is due unto your name, O oh Lord. We bow before you today, oh God. We say thank you, O oh God. Thank you for being Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Provide everything we need. I thank you for the victory, O oh God, that shall be produced, O oh God, unto today. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He kapasi kotu roba sa tu roba si kotu roba sa. He kamasi kotu roba si kotu roba sa. He shi kotu roba si kotu roba sa tu roba si. He amasi kotu roba si kotu roba sa. He kapasi kotu roba si kotu roshi kapasa. He amasi kotu roba sa kotu roshi aba. He na roba si kotu roba sa kotu Father God, on this day, Father God, we declare and we decree, God, that every dry bone shall live in this season, Father God. Father God, we declare and decree life in this season, Father God. We declare and decree, God, that your resurrection power shall come forth in your people's lives in this season. Father God, in this season, we declare and decree freedom in you in this season, Father. We declare and decree that all chains and shackles be broken in this season. Father God, we declare and decree that all generational curses are broken, God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we declare and decree that all unhealthy ties are broken in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We thank you, God, for severing the cords, Father God. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for restoring your people, God, in the name of Jesus, Father. Father God, we declare and decree prosperity to your people, Father God. We declare and decree, God, that every word that you have spoken of your people's life, it shall come forth in this season, Father God. We declare and decree the harvest, Father God. Father God, we declare and decree, God, that every giant, God, that your people have conquered, God, that it won't come up in this season, Father God. Father God, we, we declare and decree that in this season, Father God, that you would give us the keys to your kingdom in this season, Father God. Father God, we declare and decree that souls should come forth, God. In the name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, we declare and decree that addiction shall come off of your people in this season. Father God, we declare and decree stable in you in this season, Father God. I declare and decree no stagnation in God in this season. I declare and decree no spiritual abortion in this season. I declare and decree completeness in this season. I declare and decree re this depend to be. I declare and decree consistent in this season. I declare and decree power and demonstration shall come forth in this season, Father God. And Father God, we declare and decree that your will shall go forth in your people's lives.
Hallelujah. Welcome into the presence of the Lord. Welcome into the presence of our strong and mighty King. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, shout to the King. Hallelujah. 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 Strong and mighty. Hey. Oh, that's who I know him to be. Strong and mighty. Hallelujah. He is the champion of the world. He's undefeated. Hey, Shandarabaso. He is God. Hallelujah. Did you come to bless the Lord tonight?
Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Rabbasia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus.
takes the people from one place and he wants you to go to another place. It's very vital that you hear. It don't matter if you're on the back door, front door, prayer, preaching, teaching, whatever it is that God is doing in your life. When he says this is a time I'm shifting and I'm, I'm developing, I'm gonna elevate. That is a vital time to hear. And you can't force the move, you can't force the elevation, you can't f develop it out of, of your knowledge because if you, you could, we had no dependency on God, but there's a place where there's a, a seeking, it's a humble seeking and a humble surrendering and a listening and it's, finding your way in the spirit and so right now in this season in this hour God has made apparent that he has opened the heavens and have a place where he wants his people to go to and you gotta hear it you gotta sense it 
by the way of the Spirit. Past experience can't get you to this new place. It's a, it's a place of birth, you know? Very sensitive time. Oh, wow. You gotta hear the Spirit. You gotta sense the move. You have to hear the song. You have to hear the sound. You have to know the prayer. You have to know the word to preach. The utterance that come out of your mouth. You have to sense it. Hallelujah. And so this is very, it's a very peculiar season for a lot of us because that means you have to surrender and trust God to take you. And it doesn't come, you can't get it in church. Just, just it's in that personal seeking time where you're seeking God and you're at home saying, what is it? You're at home opening your heart to God and you're finding up saying, what is a singer? And so what happens is if you wait till Tuesday or Friday or Sunday to come and find your way, you can do nothing at home, then you'll be all over the place. It makes it different, difficult if it's not intimate and personal. It makes it performance when it's not intimate and you're getting up and if one or two people know it and sense it and you're trying to push and you're trying to go and everybody else is all over the place because they don't sense what God is doing. Hallelujah to the Lord. And so my prayer right now, this second, this moment, is that our ears will become open. Our spirit will become discerning. And there will be a, such a sensitivity to the heart of God. It's not a time when, when you get busy and, and get all. Oh, no, it's a time, a sensitive time. Hallelujah. So I want right here, I want everybody to just begin to lift your hands and just begin to pray in the Spirit. Say, God, what is it? God, what is it? Come on, Robo Shanta. What is it that you want from me, God? How, how can I get to you? Come and ask him, say, God, how can I get to you? What do I need to move out of my life? What I, how I do I need to position myself? Hallelujah. How do you want me to seek after you? Come on, ask him, say, God, show me. Show me. Say, God, show me. Thank you, praise the Lord. Come on, say, God, God, show me. And there's many points in our walk and times and season when God takes us from one place to another place. There's a continual movement of God. Hallelujah. And if you're not vulnerable, if you're not willing to be vulnerable to God, it's hard to get there. You can't even hear what he wanted. If God knows that you're not willing to be vulnerable, open. Hallelujah. Vulnerability means that I'm willing to humble myself. Go your way. Do it your way, God. Even if I don't see it, I don't understand it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to listen. God wants complete control. He wants control over everything. No matter how little it is, how big it is. Hallelujah. When God's people begin to yield and understand what true obedience is, hallelujah, we'll see more victories. Hallelujah, we'll see more victories, not just outward, but we need victories inward. Hallelujah, it's the inward man, it's the inward thought, it's my mind, it's, it's my soul, it's my desire. God, I hear some of you say, I need victory. I can't go another season the way I am. I've got to get to you. Hallelujah. How many of you feel like that? How many have been through enough? 
Hallelujah. Say, God, I have no more fight in me. I have no more fight. Only God knows how to disarm a fighter. Amen. Only God can do it. It takes situations and circumstances and sometimes traumas and violation, lack, all that to get us there. Hallelujah. But when it's in the heart, my God, serving God has a different meaning to it when it's here. There's no complaining, no questioning God when it's here. It's following, following, following. I love when God orchestrates things when nobody can move me like God. Hallelujah. So this is a very t sensitive time for many of us. If we miss it, it will offset our season. will offset what God is trying to do in us and through us. Amen. Come on, Elder. Hallelujah. I want it all. I want it all. I want everything God has for me. I don't want to ounce over it, but I want the fullness of it. Amen. I want the fullness of my, my God-given capacity. Hallelujah. I want to go as deep as it's called me to deep. To go, I want to go as wide as he called me to go. I want to go as high. I want to go where God ordained me, and I want to feel it with obedience. Amen. Feel it obedience only God can amen I enjoy serving God amen there's nothing boring about God as a matter of fact, that's the only thing that ever kept my excitement. You know, my husband keeps it, but it's on, it's on another level. Amen. God, God, is the only one that can fill voids. God is the only one that can heal hurts, heal wounds. He can remove a scar. God. God. Only God. Amen. The peculiar little feeling here tonight. Very peculiar. <laughs> could sense a lot of things going on in the souls of God's people right now. You can sense it and feel it. But I want to encourage you tonight and tell you that God is able. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that is invested in you and I. I want you to think about that. So God will give you what you need to believe for the things that he ordained for you. He'll give you the strength to write it out. He'll give you the faith to believe. He'll give you the endowment and the empowerment to go through and go the distance when it's him. Because he invested in you. I want you to think about that. So if you're getting weary or you're wearing down on how you're carrying things, it's either you're carrying it wrong or God didn't give it to you. You're one or the other. You come and you're being whooped and you say, God gave me this. And y'all dizzy and weak. God gave it. I'm trying to be happy. God 
God is good. <laughs> and you all beat up by the devil. I'm running my race. Oh, but when God strengthens you for a battle, you don't look like what you're going through. Hallelujah. You don't look like it. you can't see it in your eyes. As a matter of fact, when you're going through it right, they'll see the glory on you. Amen. But if you look weak in your eyes and your spirit and you beat down and you like this and say, I'm in the faith, that means you're not carrying it right. That means the burden of the Lord has become a false burden because you miscarry. And that's how miscarriages happen in the spirit. It's very vital that we carry the things that we're going through properly so that God can move and do everything that he needs to do in our heart. Amen. Sometimes God won't fix the problem the big problem, but he'll fix you in it. He'll fix you and tell you to stay in it and you'll develop character while you're waiting on it. See, we don't want to hear that because we want change. Change him. Change her. Change it. Give me some money. I'm tired of being alone. I'm tired of this. But when God changed you in it, you have a praise. You don't have a penny in your pocket. You have a praise and everything is messed up around you, but you have a praise because, because God is. He's able. Hallelujah. And you understand what wait on the Lord means. When you wait properly. Amen. God, now I want everybody to sit by someone you don't normally sit by. Yep. Sit by somebody. I want somebody real jubilant. So, see, Robin, somebody, I, I, where I want to sit by Robin? Pass the tea. There you go. Amen. Everybody sit by somebody you normally don't. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Um, Rosa and, mm-mm. Uh-uh, uh-uh. No, we're going to put Kelly by somebody else. Um, Minister. Bowser. <laughs> Can you sit by Sister Kelly? Right there, right there. Mother Bowser. Right, Kelly, turn around the other way. Right here. Mother. Mother Bowser, can you sit by Kelly? Yes. Change partner. Do you know who? Rosa? You know her? Uh-uh. Evangelist Pam, can you sit by, sit, take Rosa's place? I want to say, you moving. Evangelist Pam, I'm going to sit by her. Sit by somebody you normally don't sit by. Joe and mm -mm. I think that's elementary instruction, right? Oh, that's three. Okay. You know what? Okay. 
That's good, but you know what? Samuel and Samuel, that's good. Andrew, sit by Elder Jeff. Who don't have a partner? Sean and Roosevelt going to sit by one another. Elder Paul? Elta. Elta. Elta and Michelle. On the front row. <laughs> Michelle's on the front row. You grew up in church. All your life been in church. Okay, Mariah and come here, Nyla, Nyla. Nyla. Who don't have a, let me see. Okay, Nyla, can you go with Kay? Kay? Helena, who? Okay, how about, hey, Deacon Greg, uh-uh-uh. Greg, Helena. Huh? Oh. You with Greg, though, okay? You need a partner, Yolanda? Okay, that's a good match. Paige and Shalom. Um. Uwan and Keyshawn. Don't think so. That was really good. Lee Ray and Keyshawn. Hey, there she go. Here we go. One and there you go. I'm a I'm a hooker up. Come on, honey. You go with Prophetess Joe. So Yolanda you Adrian. So everybody covered. Shalana. Paige. We got his partner, sweetie. She going with Paige. Okay, everybody covered except Shalana. I never forget about you. <laughs> Never. Okay. Like you were back in the back of her. Wow. I, and I'm wearing my glasses. <laughs> oh. Interesting. Okay, Shalana, you can sit there. You can hang out with your bar. Okay. Okay, now we can pass them out. Before I pass them, I don't want everyone to tell. I want, this is a night of vulnerability, okay? I want you to tell your neighbor the area that you feel like you can obtain more freedom in. Let me word it like that. That's something that you bound by a little bit. And that you can say, you know what, I can obtain some more freedom in this area. 
I can see God free me up and heal me in this area. So just tell your neighbor. Just if you bound just a little bit or just a little. That you know that you have an issue in and you say, God, I, I need you to set me. You can go over there for right now. Like if you're angry and say, you know what, anger. Some, sometimes I get angry and I can see God freeing me up in this season of anger. So everything, we tell one another. Now I want you to tell them an area in your life that God has set you free in. That you know you've been delivered and God has delivered you. Y'all talking, Jasmine, you talking? Okay, now I want y'all to remember that, okay? Remember that. Okay, Helena and Renee, can y'all pass these? We're gonna talk about binding the strong man. Binding the strong man, the strong man, the root. Binding the strong power. The one thing that's holding everything together. Binding. Someone come tell me before looking at your paper, what does it mean to you to bind the strong man? According to Matthew the 12th chapter or Mark the third chapter. Someone come tell me. What does binding the strong man mean to you? I know somebody know we said I bind that devil, I bind it. We say it all the time. On the mic, on the mic. Binding the strong man. To me, pastor. Pastor. Oh, I heard you. <laughs> when you say that to me, binding the strong man is resisting the desires of your flesh until, until God frees you from it. Okay. Amen. To me, it was uh, conquering your desires to do the things you want to do to fulfill the desire that God wants you to do. Ebony, sit <clears throat> next to mama. And mama and y'all be three. You can, she can sit with you. She with the mothers. <laughs> okay, say that again. Oh, Louise and Phil. Mm-mm. Um, um, Ebony, go sit with Pastor Louise. She's over there. Philip and and you guys, come move over here. You too. I'm going to just switch you with somebody at some. Okay, Phil, you, 
feel, you know, Emmanuel go with Sandy and Chanel comes sit up here with Philip. Okay. <clears throat> up here, front row. Okay, yes, ma'am. One way, one way um, yes, it is. to me that it could be looked at is binding what they say you can't do. So in the back of your mind, you're saying, they said I can't do. So I'm binding every hindrance, every barrier. I'm pulling down every stronghold. I'm pulling down every... Uh, I, I cancel every spirit that is not of you. I'm going to do it. So do we need power yes. to bind the strong man? Yes, yes. Through. Do we need authority yes. to yes. bind yes. a strong man? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Okay. It's time to walk Jesus. in authority and power. Time for... For saying, I bind that devil, I bind that devil, I bind that devil, and the strong man is not bound in you. Right. Amen. We have to see it in our own life. It's time to walk in power. Luke 10, 19. Someone go to and just read it. Prophet Angie, I want you to read Luke 10, 19 with power on that mic. Luke 10, 19. This is one of my favorite scriptures to quote when I'm in spiritual warfare. And this is, a, this is a scripture that I quote knowing that God has given me the victory so I can decree this to the enemy. And this is one of the first scriptures in warfare that I quote to the devil. So understand that when we are in spiritual warfare and when you begin to bind and you begin to lose, that means you have the authority to speak on behalf of God and put the devil in his place. That's bottom line. When God gives you the authority to pray a prayer to deal with the devil, that means what? The enemy must what? But do we have power to bind the devil? Really? Because the first person that should benefit from authority and power given to you is you. First person should benefit from God's anointing. It's not our power. It's not our, it belongs to God. And we are to do what? Execute the will of God. Decree like when Helen began to say, I decree and I declare. I decree and we have to know that when I am decreeing and that I am declaring that I'm believing and I'm going to see it as God sees it. Unmovable faith, power in God. Read. Luke 10, 19. I have given you authority to trample on the snakes and scorpion and to overcome all the power of the enemy nothing will harm you nothing i have given you power and authority to tread upon all serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and by no means no harm shall come nigh thy dwelling that is a scripture that when that comes straight in my spirit when I know that I have to put the devil in his place. That means I believe God is with me. There can be no doubt that has to be complete faith in God when I stand against the adversary. Because some of us don't understand that you really need real power to bind the devil. Power and authority use un interchangeably. Amen. But you can have authority. Somebody can put you in place of authority, but you have no power. So you can have authority, delegated authority, but no anointing. But I'm talking about authority that's given by God that must have power with it. Amen. And so some of us, 
I bind that devil. I bind the devil and you go home and you're afraid. I make up, tell the devil to loose here and you have no freedom in your own life. But the strong man must be dealt with in this season. The strong man, the one that's holding everything together. Do you know that you can, you can have one little bitty thing that is not surrendered to God and it could be the very strong man that's holding your deliverance up? A lot of us don't realize it because we look at the little things that we fail to allow God to deal with and we look at it as nothing. But that can be the very thing that's holding your family's healing. That can be the very thing that's holding your healing. It can open the door to attack after attack. And your children, your marriage, your money can be tied into that little bitty unsurrendered strong man. But today we're going to look at the strong man different. Amen. It's time to walk in authority and power. Hallelujah. Do you believe that God died to give you power? Do you believe that, that when you stand against the devil, do you be really believe that the enemy is going to flee? Or do you walk away and you're pleading, God, please, God, please, God, please, God, please, God. No, please. We, we have to speak and decree and declare. You don't beg God when you have his mind. You know what he said. Establish. You don't have to beg him. You don't have to plead. You don't have to go on 21 days of prayer and fasting to believe God when he already spoke over you. So a lot of us have, have wasted time or trying to believe and get there. Why? Because we simply have not surrendered to God in an area, one area, or two, or three. The phrase bind the strong man or strong man is a reference to a passage in the book of Mark where Jesus is responding to some Jewish scribes who were accusing him of being possessed by Beelzebub. Why? Because they didn't understand his power and his authority. Their argument was that by the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. In other words, the reason the demons listened to Jesus was that they were in league with him and recognized him as their commanding officer, so to speak. So we understand, I say this quite often, but I'm going to keep saying there is a power upon the earth now and was upon the earth back then that demons also submit to on the dark side. Okay? In the Bible, they said Beelzebub was his, his principality name. He was a power. He is a power that people walk in in Jesus' name but have this false power that demons submit to. Okay, so demon submitting to another demon, just like a, a, a person that has been delegated in authority by God, spirit to spirit, you connect. Okay, spirit. So on the dark side, that's why there are false signs and there are false wonders because there is a false power that operates in false signs and false wonders. And it looks like God. Amen. It looks like God. It acts like God, but it's not God. Let's go to Matthew 12. Hallelujah. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were unhungered and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. But he said unto them, Have you not read what David did when he was in hunger? And they that were with him, how he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests. Or have you not heard in the law how that on the Sabbath day the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if ye had known what, was, what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even to the Sabbath. 
And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue, and behold, there was a man which had his hand withered, and they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him? And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, is, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then said he to the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole like as the other. Then the priest went out and held a council against him how they may destroy him. So when you really walk in true power, the devil hates you. And how does the enemy operate? Through people. Through people. Amen. Don't let it be you. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all, and charged them that they should not make him known, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Esaias, the prophet, saying, Behold, my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, the religious people heard it, the jealous people heard it, the envious people heard it, the religion began to speak. They said, this fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devil. Why? Because they don't understand true power. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand and if satan cast out satan he is divided against himself how shall then his kingdom stand if i by beelzebub cast out devils by whom do your children cast them out therefore they shall be your judges but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Why? Because you have true power. So it's saying, if I operate and if I show forth that God is with me, then that is evidence that he lives on the inside of me. Amen. But nowadays, we want to use it outward. We want to be anointed for outward so people can see us and know that I'm anointed so I can have this great name and we don't even look inward. That's why there are so many people, I want to be anointed, I want to be called, I want this, I want that, I want that. But most of the people who desire position have a what? Corrupt heart. Amen. Because their kingdom divided. They say God is in me, but it's part of you that is not surrendered to the power of God. Kingdom inside of you, where your heart lies, the kingdom is in you. But there is a division. One part want Jesus, the other part wants the world. One part want a party, the other part want to worship. One part want to dance in the house. One part want to dance in the bar. One part want to drink communion, the wine and the bread. The other part want to drink strong drink. Division. Struggle. A fight inside of you because the kingdom has not come unto you. Kingdom. 
And people say, yeah, the kingdom, yeah, the kingdom, yeah, the kingdom, the kingdom. We want to do the kingdom because we're, in our time, kingdom-minded people in the erroneous state are people who just want a gift and operate. They say, this is the kingdom. No, the kingdom is your heart. The kingdom is what dwells inside, tangibly, evidence, power, character, integrity, holiness, kingdom. Kingdom in me. What is it say? But if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto me. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man house and spoil his good, except he first bind the strong man? How can I enter if my kingdom is divided and bind the devil? How? Okay, let me bring it down. How do I know my kingdom is divided? When you're in a cycle that can't be broken. When you're doing things that you can't stop. When you're desiring things that you know you should not desire, and you keep desiring it, kingdom divided. One foot in, one foot out. Divided. That's how you know. Hallelujah. Even if you say, I don't want it, but I don't want to, but you're still doing it. And there's a struggle. It's a fight. It's a fight to live right. And it's easy to live wrong. I'm going to say that again. It's a fight to live right, but it's easy to live wrong. Division. He that is not with me is against me. He that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. So you can't, if you're with God, you're with him. But if you're not with him, you're going to scatter something. Or in other words, something is going to be broken down. It may be just your mouth, it may be your attitude, it may be whatever your struggle, it's scattering. That means going different directions, scatter. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall not be forgiven him. But whosoever speak against the Holy Ghost, because why? The Holy Ghost lives within you. We're talking about against God, Holy One. It shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by this fruit. What you do divine defines who you are until you change. I'm going to say that again. What you do defines who you are until you change it and reverse it. It's a bad thing when you're not working to reverse it. Hallelujah. And you just surrender to it. Even when you're working to reverse what you lived in and what you were bound in, but you're working and you're pressing to reverse it, God honors it. But he don't honor somebody that shout, sing, dance, and you're not working to change. It's a difference. One is rebellion and the other one is sender, surrendering, processing. Okay. There's two different processes. That we say, I'm in my process. I'm in my, you ever heard somebody say, you know, call somebody on it? I'm in my process. That's a rebellious sound. But when you check somebody that needs to be checked and you know you're not right, say, that's me. I'm going to get this thing right. See, change has a sound. Working on it has a look, it has a walk, it has a, you can feel when somebody is trying to come out of something. And you can also feel and sense when somebody is staying and okay with being lukewarm. The Bible says hot, cold, lukewarm, through. Hot, cold, lukewarm, through. I like that. 
And whosoever is speaking against the son of man, it shall not be forgiven. Either make a tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by its fruit. Old generation of vipers, how can ye be an evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Yeah, I didn't mean it. You said it. You forced me. You said it. You pushed me. You said it. It came from somewhere. Amen. But if it's not in you, I don't care if they poke you, push you, pry you. If it don't live in you, it can't come out of you. Coming out of you is evidence that it's in you or something like it. Or the strong man that is relative to the what's entered out of your mouth, released out of your mouth. You'll understand that in a minute. You know, demons flock together. Most of the time, if you have one, there's always two or three or more with it. Why? Because they run in packs. They run in packs. If you have jealousy, you have insecurity, you have competition, you have murder, anger, strong man, and the fruit of it. Fruit. Every demon bears fruit. So if it's a demon, it has fruit. <coughs> You'll understand that in a minute. Hallelujah. Even you make an excuse. Fruit. Fruit is always the proof. I don't care what you say, what you do. Let me see your fruit. I look at your action, your reactions, whatever, your responses, whatever. I look at them. It means something. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringing forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringing forth evil things. Treasure. The Bible refers to it as treasure. There are things that we want. It's treasurable because sometimes we protect the ugly part of us. So when you protect something and you don't want anybody to mess with it, it's treasurable to you. Treasure. Vital, important to me. Leave it alone. This is just how I am. This is how I've always been. It's treasure and it's ugly. So you protect that treasure. It becomes viable. And any time you protect something that is ugly, that needs to come out of you, it becomes something. It develops into a beast. It develops. It don't just stay cute. It is just not just a little bit of offense. Any offense, even if it starts tiny, if you leave it alone, it will grow. And it will begin to grow past your power and your control. And one day you'll wake up somebody else and say, I don't know how this came. I, I don't remember. I'm just irritated. I'm just angry. I just don't feel I'm this, I'm that. I don't get it. Something planted is a seed. That means it's a seed and it's been treasured. You protected it. Now you it's out of control. But I say to you that every idle word that men shall speak, every idle, useless, whatever word you want to say, careless word, the Bible says, they shall give account, therefore, in the day of judgment. Every idle word, even if you just didn't mean it, you still going, God's going to bring it to you. And I was thinking about that the other day. I said, I said a lot in my life. I said a lot in my life. You pushed me back in my day against the wall. I got you here. And when I got finished with you with, from a little girl, that was it. Power. When we think, when we look at our words in our mouth, it's power. I'm going to get you together, tell you, treasure what I think of myself with my words. When people don't control their mouth and their tongue, it is treasure to you. That means I want to use it. It's vital ammunition to you. Amen. 
Every idle word that men shall speak, they should give account therefore in the day of judgment. For by the words thou shalt be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. Idle, useless, didn't mean words, all of them. Accountability. That's the Bible. Amen. Go to your sheet. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own house, his possessions are safe. But when someone stronger attacks and overpowers him, he takes away the armor in which the man trusted and divides up his plunder. Satan is strong and he holds possession that he guards jealously. Hear me. Satan gets jealous and he guards what he plants in you. He expects you to live it out. He expects. If you allow him to plant a seed, then he wants to see the fruit of him. And he works to get you so you can be fruitful in him. Uh -huh. A spirit. But Jesus is the one who was and is stronger than the strong man. He is the only one who can bind the strong man and rescue us from his clutches. He is the only one. That's why the devil fights you. Don't pray. Don't read your Bible. Don't come to church. It's a battle to do this. It's a battle to do that in the things of God. But it's easy to do the other things. It's easy to sit up and watch TV. You ever, this is, okay. You can sit up and watch TV for four hours, but you go to sleep in just 10 minutes reading the Bible. Just to put it lightly, you get it. You ever felt yourself? You get the Bible and you, all of a sudden you get, your neck start cramping or itching. Something start happening, all of a sudden things go in your mind. Say, I want to drink a water. I'm all of a sudden I'm hungry. As soon as you open that Bible, your mind gets distracted. As soon as you start trying to do something, but you can sit up for five hours and watch TV straight up. Something that is going straight in your soul. Helping that treasure. Feeding that treasure. But read your Bible five minutes. Go on to prayer, two minutes. Go to sleep, say, ooh, the Holy Ghost put me to sleep. Boy, I prayed so good last night. I pray, Prophetess Joel, I pray. Well, how long you pray? Two minutes, girl. But it was, it was powerful. We begin to talk and try to cover that. Amen. Talk about your, your awesome experience with God, but you can't read your Bible. The concept of binding and loosing is taught in the Bible in Matthew 16 and 19. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. In this verse, Jesus is speaking directly to the apostle Peter and indirectly to the other apostle. Jesus' words meant that Peter will have the right to enter the kingdom himself. That he will have general authority symbolized by the possession of the keys. And that preaching the gospel will be the means of opening the kingdom of heaven to all believers and shutting it against unbelievers. The book of Acts shows us this process at work. By his sermon on the day of Pentecost, Peter opened the door of the kingdom for the first time. The expressions bind and loose were common to Jewish legal phraseology, phraseology meaning to declare something forbidden to declare it or to declare it aloud. Bind, loose. And whenever we speak on God's behalf, that means I am saying God allows it or God denies it. Do you know how we have to be upright to even speak God's heart? And if any time that we get to the place that we are, are, are okay with living any kind of way but want to speak God's mind to people? Think about it. 
You want to speak God's mind and prophesy and preach and can't even live it. Can't live nothing. You know, the mothers and oh, they see, we get upset. But when I came up, the mother used to sit down. Pull your shirt down. Pull your dress down. Wear your pantyhose. Everything. The mothers, oh God, if in my time they live, some of them live today and see what goes on in the church. I believe the mothers probably be fighting and slapping us. Amen. And I thank God because I did a lot and prayed that the mothers didn't see me when I came into church. Hallelujah. I know how it is. Peter and the other disciples were to continue Christ's work on earth and preaching the gospel and declaring God's will to men. And they were armed with the same authority as he possessed. So I want you to think about that. When we stand against the devil, what Jesus possessed, we are armed with it. So why is it that it's hard for us to believe and get freedom for ourselves? Because there is a strong man in you. Mm-hmm. There's a strong man down somewhere. And sometimes he, most of the time, the strong man is hidden and he's covered. He's covered with personalities. He's covered with lies and lies that we have developed into thinking that is real. He, that strong man is so sealed that we don't even have a clue where it started. That's why it's a strong man. Hallelujah. But God is uncovering the strong man in our life. Amen. In Matthew 18, 18, there is also a definite reference to the binding and loosening in the context of church discipline. The apostle did not usurp Christ's lordship and authority over individual believers and their eternal destiny, but they do exercise the authority to discipline and, if necessary, excommunicate disobedient church members. 1 Corinthians 1st chapter tells you. Christ in heaven ratifies what is done in his name and in obedience to his word on earth. In both Matthew 16, 19 and 18, 18, the Greek text makes the meaning clear. What you bind on earth will have already been bound in heaven. Why? Because we are sensing the mind and will of God and we're only speaking it forth. Amen. We don't create his will. We establish his will by agreeing with what he wants. It does not originate in you. It does not originate in me. It's already established in heaven, and we have to bring it on earth by obedience. Hallelujah. Obedience every day will keep you in the center of God's will. If you do what he tells you to do every day, you master obedience for the day, you'll be in the center of his will for the next day. And then the next day. And then the next day. And you'll get to where you need to go. And some people say, well, I don't know. Obey him for the day and he'll tell you what you need to know. Sometimes God don't want to speak to us. He don't want it. He don't need to speak to you all the time, especially when you think you know it all. When you think you know it all and you think you got the prophetic anointing, you think he's been dealing with you so deep, he don't want to speak, don't do anything, listen, stay right there. Don't do anything. Amen. Sometimes God checks our obedience. See, if we're going to run and start finding up doing things on our own. Hallelujah to God. What you bind on earth will have already been bound in heaven. What you loose on earth will have already been loosed in heaven. In other words, Jesus in heaven releases the authority of his word as it goes forth on earth for fulfillment of its purpose only. God released the word of God to fulfill his purpose. Hallelujah. And if you see something, it's not always expedient to say. Amen. Some of us feel like we see things and we can speak whenever we want to speak. No. The Holy Ghost has to unction you for his glory and for his purpose. 
If God don't, I can see it clear, but if he don't tell me, I don't know nothing about it. Amen. Nothing. If he don't tell me to say anything, I can see you doing whatever. But if God say, see it and pray, I have no authority to speak on you, although I'm your pastor. But God gives me the authority to speak when he deems it worthy. Not when I think it is. Hallelujah. He's Lord. How do we overcome the enemy? The Bible says he is disarmed when someone who is stronger overcomes him. We disarm him. When someone who's stronger? God. With God in you, that means I am. Because he lives in me. And so we can come before the throne of grace boldly. It doesn't mean just kotobo, shato, hey, loud. It's not loud. Loud does not mean you have power in your bow. As a matter of fact, some people, the louder they are, they're more afraid some of them are. You ever seen a loud person with a big mouth but full of fear? We get in the ring with Holyfield, you'll be afraid, right? But some of us think we can get in the ring with the devil, have no power, have no holiness, have nothing, no keeping power in us, but we'll say, I bind you, devil. I bind the devil, laugh, he walk away. He walk, it is no fight. He knows when the scent of God is on somebody. He knows when somebody say, hallelujah, that true power is on somebody. He knows it. He knows it. Like the seven sons of Sceva. They thought they wanted some power. They, they like. They, some, some people like, oh, they get excited with the movement of God. That's it. It just excites you. That's it. To see supernatural. But it needs to excite your heart to change. God want to move upon you, give you some power so you can execute judgment on yourself. Hallelujah. That the power of God will make you rebuke yourself. Hallelujah. Look, then you can look in your mirror and say, you ugly. You need to come out of me, devil. In Jesus' name. In Jesus, I rebuke you out of Tony. Because it's Jesus living in me. I rebuked myself, as a matter of fact, for a whole year. I, if people would have heard my prayer, they would have thought I had completely lost my mind. I went crazy over myself when I understood the depth of my sin of my heart. I understood that I had no power, no authority to bind an ant. And I was talking to myself. It took a long time till I got delivered. But some of us get tired of buying and rebuke. I rebuke myself in Jesus. So cold up, I say, I cold up, I see, hold, this mouth in Jesus, this heart. Take it, Lord. I was stripping out everything. We must get to the point that we're sick and tired of ourselves because we are holding back our deliverance. People can do everything against you, but you don't only want to stop your deliverance. You're the only one. You could be in a den of lions. But if the power of God lives in you, it won't affect, it won't influence. As a matter of fact, it looks like nothing. Picked up nothing. Nothing. Why? Because the devil don't define you. If the devil defines you by his seeds in you, you're in trouble. That means definition. He can only define you by his fruit. He's in you. You have a definition of something. Perversion, jealousy, anger, strife, whatever. That's the only way he can define you. That's why you feel secure, insecure. You feel insecure because you allow the devil to define who you are. I'm going to say that again. You are insecure. You are jealous because there's a seed and the devil has defined who you are. God 
God who is king of the universe has power that far surpasses any affluence of the evil one. There is clearly no contest, no contest. You are entering into a fight and the devil knows he's defeated. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna tell you the truth. The devil knows he is no, what do you call it on the ring? No match for God. But he wants to send tricks and thoughts to your mind to do what? Disarm your faith. Disarm your honor. When you question God and you don't believe God, you disarm yourself. And the enemy can only send thoughts, imaginations, feelings to you so you can doubt God and you disarm you walking like this. Devil this. Devil said, come on this way now. That's what we do. When he controls your mind and your emotion, you're like a puppet. Hallelujah. There is no contest. So if Satan has been able to set up his thrones and dominion through wicked rulers, it's because the church has not been overpowering the strong man in prayer. Prayer will unveil your heart and God's heart too. Prayer, sincere prayer. Let me say that. Not emotional prayer. God, oh, both shot. Deliver me, God. Uh, God, I don't want to be saved. God, oh, oh, God. Not sincere prayer. Say, God, I'm tired of myself. God, I believe that you are able to do. God, I submit myself. Strengthen me, God. In the, the season that I came out of something, I asked him, I said, I don't want an anointing to preach. I don't want an anointing to prophesy. Give me an anointing to die to my flesh. I anoint my flesh to die because I'm hindering myself. I don't want to preach anymore. Tell me what I need to do to surrender. That was a prayer that got his attention. And so I had to back up and disarm myself, and I was willing to be beat down. Whatever it took God, do it. Whatever I need to go through, do it. And I said, dethrone Tony. And I declared it to heaven. And when the enemy knows that you made a covenant with God, a covenant of surrendering to God, he knows. It's a matter of time. Hallelujah. He knows it's a matter of time. Daniel 9, prayer. There are various ways to pray which are useful in dealing with strong men. And Daniel 9, that he was engaged in 21 days of prayer and fasting for his nation. Daniel systematically confessed and repented for the sins and iniquities of his people while they were being held captive in Babylon. We do not know if Daniel knew he was wrestling against the power of the strong man in the beginning, the prince of Persia, before an angel came and told him. So sometimes you don't know. Sometimes the peculiar things that are happening can very well be influenced by a principality. Especially if you are seeing things happen that has happened in your, down your ancestral line. That means there is a strong man, a principality that is ruling to make, to make things repeat itself from one generation to the next generation to the next generation. Okay, this one has a weakness. This one has a predisposed. Okay, yes, I can operate this way. So he watched. He looks to find the weak one to repeat himself. However, we do know that the answer to his prayer was sent right away, but a demonic ruler tried to interfere. So we understand when you go and you bind the devil, these powers, these rulers in high places, not just by words, but connection with God. That's what we need in this hour. Because there's another level of, of warfare that's been released, if you don't already know it, against the house, not just the saints, the world. The unsaved and the saved. The devil want them all. Amen. 
We learn from Daniel's experience that persistent prayer, fasting, and repentance can be powerful tools for overcoming strong men. First Timothy prayer. Another insight for dealing with strong men is given in First Timothy 2. We are first exhorted to simply pray for all people, petitioning God for their needs, interceding for their situations, and even offering up prayers of thanks for them. Essentially, Paul is challenging Timothy to be continually alert in prayer, to surround people with prayer. This weakens the abilities the ability of strong men to be able to deceive and attack people. So intercessors, people who are called to pray, you build a hedge for the principality because there are sometimes when the enemy rules in you, there's still a power up high connecting what's in you, but intercession deals with the principalities outside of you. Amen. You ever seen somebody walk like this? Lost their mind? principality rules can sleep outside in the cold and do things that that normally is very difficult to do to human life principalities rules amen but God is looking for a pure vessel to put his power in so we can stand and bridge the gap hallelujah and bind the one inside of you first for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The strong man is a satanic power in charge or responsible for a stronghold. It is a fortified entity that Satan builds to exalt himself against the knowledge and the plans of God. Satan always tries to operate under the cover of darkness. The only thing that exposes him is the light, illumination of God's word. As long as Satan's strongholds remain concealed, the strong man is safe. That means you got to uncover him. You got to uncover him. As soon as the strong man is identified, half of the victory is established. Identification. A strong man may have other evil spirits operating under his domain or authority, but the strong man is the ruling spirit, the one that, that holds the, the plan right there, deviates. For example, bitterness, strong man or ruling spirit, but under his domain or authority is resentment, unforgiveness, hatred, anger, wrath, and rage, murder, but you can become bitter. And that bitterness, because you have not forgiven, is just have all of these fruit. Get irritated easily, frustrated easily, just all kind of things are happening, and you don't understand why you like that. Because most of us think we're past it. You ever said to yourself, I thought I was past this. But ooh, something about him, something about her. Just, I don't, I can't put my finger on it. But something about them I just don't like. We identify, you don't, you have not consciously identified it, but subconsciously. Your subconscious identified with it. Something in me knows something in them. I don't know what because it's concealed. That means it's a likeness. And that means a lot of times that there's a blind spot that have not been revealed, but down deep inside of me, I connected to it. You get that? Your unconscious, subconscious man feels it. Your subconscious man knows it. It's not in your conscious because it's hidden in your subconscious. And so it simply means that God must uncover because if you're feeling something all the time and you're missing it and you can't see it, that means it's a blind spot. That's what a blind spot is. And that means we lack discernment. Discernment means I'm able to see as God sees. I can tell you what it is. Hmm, I got it. 
But if you always feeling something and not knowing what it is and it's dictating to you, making you uncomfortable, I sense I'm so uncomfortable. I, I don't know what it is. I don't like the something, something, something. That means subconscious. There's a lot of stuff down there that God needs to bring up. Otherwise, it's going to continue to dictate you. You will not have any control over it. And you got the Holy Ghost. Shana. Speaking in tongues, but have no power. That's why speaking in tongues is a gift. Without repentance, we can have gift with no power. You can operate in a gift, but possess no power. And God can use you, and you can have no power. He just opened your mouth to speak. He just opened your mind, just like when you're in the dream. Give you an example. You ever been in sin and you had a dream about you better get out of sin? God spoke that to you. He opened your spirit, your non-discerning self, opened your eyes to give you a message to tell you, I'm about to move on you. Come out of it. Okay. You must bind a strong man. Remember whatever you bind or loose on earth, the angels of God are mandated to enforce your command in the heaven. They are mandated. Hear me. I want you to understand that. When God places a mandate on his word, your mouth, your situation, guess what? Heaven's got to move. Angels begin to work on your behalf. Amen. God will send the help you need. He'll put everything in place that you need to get through this season. But the strong man has not been identified or we are not willing to surrender and yield something to God. Something, something. You ever been excited about a revival or you know that God moved in prayer and you felt a moving you felt it oh, I felt that one you ever say I felt that one I feel that one but then you walk out of here and that thing's still with you aren't you tired of that aren't you tired of feeling a change oh God a surge of, of moving forward and going out just to find that this thing is still with me that means something has to be identified past what you've been praying, past what you've been decreeing, past what you've been prophesied over. Because even God is the only one that can open the eyes of man to allow them to see into the heart of man. Spirit to spirit, God gives us the sight to see. When is your time to hear? When is your time? See, a lot of us say, well, when is my time ready? Well, show God. Show God. Not, not me, not, not the leader. Show God that you mean business with him. Because there is no one that will call upon the name of the Lord will, that will not be saved. Unless God just totally rejects you. But there's no one here that's in that position right now. That is beyond God's grace and his mercy. He gives us another chance to surrender that thing that you know some of us don't know, but some of us have not positioned ourselves to find out. Because if God show you right now and your heart is not ready to see yourself, you're going to only do what? Deny it. You're going to only deny it. So there are times where God will hold it back until you get ready to see yourself. He knows the time. There's no power. He can't. I have no power in me. And it's given by God to pray over any individual for their freedom. I can pray it. I can want it 100%. But if God don't release your time of deliverance, there's no prayer that will break you through. God is waiting on you and I to surrender it all. Position yourself for God to speak. He's waiting. 
And if you found yourself anywhere, come to the altar. Not deep. Come on, talk to God. Heal the 
battle of my mind, God, I surrender my mind to you. I surrender to you. Come on, surrender it. Only you can do that. wickedness in high places and they are bound. We sever every connected cord, every connected power to every dark high power God. Father, show us the strong man, the root of the madness. Father, we're ready to see it. Open our eyes that we will see our ears, that we will hear our spirit, that we can discern Father God, in the name of Jesus, cleanse the heart, go to the root. Release your healing fire to the root of my being. Come on, tell God. I need to be healed. I know I need to be delivered. And I surrender. Father, I want it right here. Empower me. Say, endow me to change. Strengthen me to change. And walk this out, God. And if you want to make a covenant with God and you're ready to change right here on the altar, you make that covenant. That means there's a promise that I'm willing to make to God as I submit myself to change. When you submit yourself to change, you should be endowed and empowered to walk away. You can walk away because it's not in the feeling, it's in the knowing. When you made that covenant with God and that commitment you can walk away and feel endowed and empowered to change hallelujah then God will give you some real power amen so it can work with you hallelujah. operate inward As a matter of fact, when God begins to move on you, it's so sovereign, and it's so peaceful. It's an assurance that God gives you in your spirit and a strength to walk away. And then he'll go in battle for you. Amen. He'll begin a battle for you. Amen. Y'all ready for victory? Amen. I am too, in Jesus' name. Thank you, God.